Hey friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just gonna take my microphone so you can hear me. Welcome to another episode of our book club on Friday. It's almost weekend, so let's close off the week with a nice book here that is all about sales again because it's the focus of the month and it's sales month. It's focusing on sales and there's so much to talk about that. And today's book is, let me just show you right there, is Let's Get Real <laughs> or Let's Not Play. Let's Get Real or Let's Not Play. That's the book that we are going to talk about a little bit today and to share some of the insights that I got from this book. This is already a little bit of an old book. It's from 2008. When they first released it but the concepts in this book are very very relevant still very relevant because these things don't really change like if you're talking to to a potential customer and, and the sales talks that you have uh, the way to to help make them to help them make a decision that's what it's about sales is to help people make a decision that hasn't changed that much, I would say. There's, of course, different techniques techniques and so on, but at the, same, at the core of everything is the psychology of people. Um, and it's, it's a way of making sure that you are talking to the right people and that making sure that you can assess if they are ready to jump into your solution, that they are ready to get the help from you. If you cannot determine that, like no matter what you're going to do, no matter what kind of technique, or it's still not going to be good enough because there's a misalignment, right? Uh, so just to say that if you did sales in 2008, if you do sales now, I, the principles stay the same. I've been listening to Zig Ziglar. I don't know if you know that person, but Zig Ziglar was one of the great salespeople from way back in the time. And he did a lot of sales training to people. And you can listen to him on Spotify and you can listen to his old workshops. Uh, and the way that he talks about sales is still so relevant these days. Just like, it's crazy that the principles stay the same and that the only thing that changes are the products and maybe also the personality of people's but at the same time again principles stay the same but what are these kind of principles that i'm talking about what can we extract from a book like this well i have here made some annotations some yeah some notes on this book and I want to highlight some of these. Here, this one, for example. Like I said, it's all about qualifying people. It's all about qualifying opportunities. If you're not qualifying the opportunities, then you might be talking to the wrong people and you might waste a lot of time. And if you're watching live, welcome. Welcome to this live stream. Welcome to the weekly book club, Inside Technology. I hope you will enjoy this episode. If you're reading a book right now, a book, a business book right now that you would love to discuss here on this podcast, no, on this live stream, it's not a podcast. Let me know in the comments. Say where, you, where you're watching from and who you are. And let's have a conversation about a business book and about this business book about let's get real or let's not play where there's a lot of principles that I love to talk about. And this is one of them. Here, it's about qualifying opportunities. And it's, it's an amazing fact that, as I highlighted here, 80% of lost sales opportunities are a result of an inadequate or non-existent qualification process and the lack of an effective sales planning process. And yet we still do the same things again and again. We still talk to people that we shouldn't be talking to. Why are we talking to some of these people that are not qualified? Why are we not qualifying them better? 
Now you might ask, okay, but how do we qualify them better? Look, you have to qualify the opportunity, not just the people, but also the opportunity. And there is this kind of a checklist here that they brief, briefly talk about, like, in the mutual, so if, if we talk about opportunity, it's, okay, what problems or results is the client trying to address, right? How do we define a problem? What are the financial costs and benefits? What has stopped the organization from resolving these issues? If you can answer, if, if they can answer these questions and it looks like they can really help you, then you're getting closer and closer to actually getting somebody to to join your program to join whatever you're selling right there right now there's a whole chapter of this on how to create that kind of conversation the opportunity conversation where you want to get out all of the issues all of the things that they're experiencing right now all of the problems that they're experiencing right now because the more that you know, the more ammunition that you have later to actually get them to sign up to your thing, right? But it's not just like listing out the issues, it's also prioritizing them. It's gathering evidence around those issues. What are the numbers around those issues? Can you really pinpoint where they're struggling, right? These are all the questions and the things that you need to ask to make sure that you are on the right track to getting these people towards your product or program. So that that's what I like. I mean, this kind of book, it's pretty tactical. It's pretty technical, I would say, but they lay it out very good, right? And they also talk about the, the fact, the principle, like if they're not qualified, just go for a graceful exit just tell them that they're not a good fit and that this is probably not for them and even if you do that if you say like oh but maybe this is probably not for you even then people will still try to fight you and and say and try to sell them to you and they would say like yeah but this is for me i know for sure that i can use this and they will sell themselves to you so there's something to, to get there as well um some other points here that i highlighted uh so okay here this one here i highlighted if you cannot find important problems or desired results you probably have low client motivation and low probability opportunity I'll read that again. If you cannot find important problems or desired results, you probably have low client motivation and a low probability opportunity. So even if you would close this client, they will not be really motivated to go on or to, to get the results that you are promising them. Because there is no clear important problem or a desired result that they have expressed or that they seem to have. Maybe it's just the next shiny object that they see and that they want to jump into. But if you cannot qualify them, if you cannot understand their most important problems and their desired results, they can join your program. You might be able to help them, but they will, again, not be motivated. And unmotivated customers are a pain in the ass. They will not do what you ask them to do. They will not get the results. You will not get a testimonial. And as a business owner, if you don't get the results from, I mean, if you cannot get people the results, you you cannot even say to anybody else, like join my program because look at these amazing results. You're not getting them. So this is a losing situation if you are um, having these kind of customers that are not motivated, basically. There was another point here that I really want to show you. Um, so let's say here. Here, this is about this is about identifying an issue. And 
something that they have been struggling with a lot and where you can ask five golden questions about that issue. If you do this, you got, again, a lot of information from them to connect that to your solution. So you can ask, how do you measure it? How do you measure the issue? They say, yeah, I have inconsistent sales. What does that mean? How much revenue are you getting right now? And what do you want it to be? What is it now? What would you like it to be? What is the value of the difference? What is the value over time? What is the value in two or three years if this is not getting solved, right? And in the book itself, it's it's more, I would say, uh, these are all about sales in, in corporate situations and high, high end sales situations. But these principles stay the same at any level. Like you have to know the numbers. You have to know how they measure it. Like, they can say, yeah, I have a problems with getting more customers. Okay, but how do you how do you measure that you're not getting enough leads, for example? You can say I got I don't have enough leads, but how do you measure it? How do you know? If they do not know that, then maybe your solution won't help because they don't even know how to get leads. And your solution might be to get or to close more clients. But if they don't get enough leads, your solution will not help. Right. So these are some of the questions that you can ask. And I've put all of this, actually. I used this book to create a, a call plan. And let me see uh, where I can get this. I think it was in this chapter. So defining a call plan here the meeting plan the call plan however you want to call it so you have to set up a call plan and next monday i'm going to do a free training here as well in the community to show you what kind of a call plan that i have created for technology which i'm always using when i have these kind of calls with potential customers because you need to have a plan you need to know what kind of questions that you're going to ask like the ones i've just shown you and also, you need to have in, in mind, what is the goal of this meeting? You need to know that. You need to have the end in mind. With the end in mind, you already know some of the beliefs that you will have to break, you will have to talk about, and you will have to see if you can actually get them through these beliefs. That kind of a, a plan to enable a decision. Because if you're having a sales call, you want to get a decision from your potential customer. So what kind of decisions do they need to make? Connected, as you can see here, connected to these beliefs. If they make a decision that is favorable, then they will be much easier to close. But for each of these beliefs, you will need to go through some of the questions and asking for decisions and resolving yellow lights. If you don't know what yellow lights are, they are <laughs> roadblocks. They are objections that if they are not getting solved, they turn into red lights. And once they are red lights, the, the sale is over. You basically already lost the sale, even if it's that from the first key belief, let's say, if it's becoming a red light, you've lost, right? So having that in a, in a meeting plan, um, those questions, the, that structure to get them to make a decision is super, super important. And here in the book, they laid it out pretty well. You don't need to use every single piece of that, every single detail, but the end in mind, definitely having an idea what their beliefs might be, asking the right questions, and also defining what are the yellow lights. When are you discovering something that can be a huge roadblock? If, if it's not getting solved, that there will be no deal, and even the solution might not even help them. So you have to figure that out. 
you have to have next steps in, in mind as well. Like before you even end the meeting, you need to have next steps next steps covered even if it's just the next meeting but you have to get it done if you do not have next steps there is no commitment at all from anybody and then you will end up chasing your customer your potential customer we don't want that we don't want to chase anybody we want to have something that that is easy <laughs> that people are excited to join instead of having to chase people so this was this book was a great read in a way that you need to use this as a practical guide you need to read this you need to apply this in your own sales process you need to come up with that kind of a meeting plan and again next monday i will show you more in detail how i designed that a meeting plan that call plan what is in there you will see that and you can use that. You can really use that because if you know this information, if you can qualify these opportunities really well, then you are better off than before, right? If you do not have a call plan, if you're just winging it, if you're just thinking like I'm going to go into a sales call and things will be all right, then you will lose a lot of sales. You cannot leave it up to chance you cannot leave it up to just hoping that the customer will get it what you're talking about. Qualifying them, asking the right questions, um, getting through the, the yellow lights, make sure that they can make an in, informed an informed decision is what it's all about. So if you're interested in this book, I really recommend it that you go get it. Let's get real. Um, it's on Kindle. Look, I've so shown it to you, so it's on Kindle, pretty easy to get to and to start reading it. Or you can buy the hardcover. There is no affiliate link anywhere uh, connected to this. So it's just a good book to have as a business owner about sales. If you want to improve your sales game, this is the book to get to. All right. So I hope this was a little bit valuable. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Put them in comments. Uh, put them in comments also. Put in comments also what you're reading, what kind of sales book you like, and maybe we can present it in one of the next sessions. For now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in one of the next days. Bye-bye.